Siege 2, I think, could have something like that. I, I could see a world in which they announce Siege 2, it gets all of the hype, it gets people playing again, and, and it does all of that. More than probably what a health update 2.0 would do. Another day in the office. Another episode, another week. Um, How's your day been? It's been good. It's been, it's been a long day. It has been. <laughs> it's been a very long day. Um, Siege 2. What about it? Good? Bad? Thoughts? Is it coming out? Uh, no. Has it been announced? <laughs> I... It could be before we publish it, it this. Probably, it probably has not been announced. Probably but, not. No. Um, it's definitely, a, I think, a talking point, isn't it? A, a quite relative yeah. one to where Siege is at at the moment. Does it need some some renewed life in its legs? Does it need to be changed completely? Uh, and we're seeing, arguably, a lot of games kind of go down that path now where they're, they're putting a 2 next to them. <coughs> Overwatch 2. Overwatch 2. There's Dota uh, 2, but they did that. Path of Exile 2. Counter-Strike 2. Uh, classic. Yeah, classic. Maybe it'll be out by the time we... <laughs> <laughs> Actually... It's not out as at the time of recording. If this is out, what is it? This will be... A, oh, this will oh. really hit the SEO. Oh, this could... This, this could actually be massive. No, but like seriously, I think for Siege, um, obviously it's been out now for actually quite some time. Um, when you take into account... <laughs> I am 23 now. When I played the, uh, the Rainbow Six Beta, I would have been... 15 really yeah wow yeah so played, I mean, it, played at 15 at my grandparents house on like a strict uh nat type i think i played two games in six hours but it was worth it crazy now i'm here it goes to show that it's obviously been around for quite some time which that in itself is obviously a, a good thing there's nothing wrong with that obviously well, it's one of the what longest live service fps shooters around cs overwatch are probably the only two yeah. that get close in my mind Call of Duty needs to release a game every year to stay relevant. Overwatch so. was 2016, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, like a year after Siege, I think. So, I mean, year. like, and you kind of see where that is at, at the moment. I mean, still great casually, oh, yeah, probably obviously. at an esports level, it's struggling a little bit, but um, yeah, they got far more backing, though, over at Blizzard. Oh, they Activation. got the fucking cash money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're so cashed they, up. They could do whatever they want, but um, is it time? Is it is it now time to go one bigger, one one better? Is it maybe not the time, but you still got to do it maybe within the next five years? Ooh. Do you want like just a yes or no? Or I want your thoughts on it. You could you could say no, never, <laughs> tomorrow. I I think Steve has proven over such a long period of time that it can continue to fill its niche well enough and perform well enough on a lot of different metrics even if you just want to take the cold hard cash approach it is always in the earnings calls for ubisoft rainbow six is single-handedly carrying the company it's been doing it for ages now i don't mm. see any reason from a marketability point of view from a game health point of view whatever that siege 2 needs to be a thing not right now i don't think it needs to ever really ever. really so you, does it? Is that more the the and number that's not, behind it? I yeah, I, like you're talking about Siege Two. Or, I mean, and you obviously, I yeah. mean, there's still be updates. I should clarify that I don't mean the game should you know stay on the the, the same path and shouldn't innovate and try new shit. I just don't think taking the Overwatch two half assed approach of adding a number to the end, taking away um, a player on each side and half assing a PVE mode is really the way to go about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll see four v four Siege. Who knows? Um, but I. Yeah, I think the Siege name can hold up on its own and you don't need okay. to add a number and a marketing budget behind making the game better. Could you do a Siege 2 uh, level reboot but without actually adding the 2? What would that look like? Um, I actually don't know, <laughs> to be completely honest, because maybe it hasn't necessarily been done before, uh, that, at least off the top of my head. I'm trying to think of maybe... I, I guess... <laughs> I actually can't think of anything on the top of my head, but as I was thinking... You can't thinking, think of anything. As I was thinking, though, <laughs> no thoughts. No, I, I was thinking, I'm thinking about something like League of Legends. Right. I played League of Legends actually back when you were 10. It explains a lot. Yeah, so there you go. That doesn't have to <laughs> probably reveal my age as much. I'm, of course, 30, as everyone knows. But, um, we covered that in uh, episode one. Go back and watch it. I'm sure you know it looked like dog shit. Oh, yeah. It was, it was like a flash game. It was pretty like yeah like a pop flash game off could have had it on mini clips yeah. yeah exactly um and so you think about where it was and where it's come to and at no point have they become league two or league of legends two they, they've just continued to steady in, increase the the growth and improve the systems the the launcher itself obviously has 
dynamically shifted throughout the years. The in-game systems and the, they've clearly fixed probably a lot of the coding behind everything. Everything has improved and changed and become modern without adding a two next to it. So does Siege follow the path maybe then of a league versus what has become a bit of a new age meta in, in, a, in a way with these games by adding a two next to their name and not doing a reboot, but adding an, a massive update? Yeah, I mean, that sort of follows on to the big point that um, I wrote down is Siege has proven over this period of time that its regular update model is actually industry leading really at the time you think back to late 2015 the only way that games were adding these regular updates that you know like a set yearly schedule was things like call of duty with the season pass before the battle pass era came with Fortnite. right mm. um siege at launch people forget this because they have rose tinted glasses that game was this fucking close to being dead on arrival nobody played it if you look back at the steam charts the numbers were shit the servers did not work. The game was a br absolutely broken beyond belief. It was fun. It had a good core. That's why people played it. That's why I played it. That's why people continue good to. Good concept. Yep. But Rainbow Six and Ubisoft took a risk in setting out a free update model and stood by it. They did... They. Someone will probably correct me on this, but they have never Please do missed, so, by the way. to my knowledge... <laughs> A major update with the asterisks of Operation Health. They traded out a season to improve largely the back end of the game, which helped in the long run because it helped in, you know, being able to update the game and actually fix the core of it, which was sh technically shit. Um, and they stuck by it and they're still doing it to so this day. They have changed things, right? We don't have two operators a season and we don't always have a map and yada, yada, yada. But at its core, the update model of Siege has done such a great job in renewing the the very slow start to its life and it's a model that has taken off in other games every other live service game is doing the same thing and i would argue worse still overwatch doesn't have regular updates with new operators and maps as far as i'm aware it's all a bit all over the place league yeah, is I, a bit all over the place like yeah. a apex is maybe set to a schedule like I'll tell you one game that actually is on a schedule is Dead by Daylight. I, I oh, you've been no, playing it a bit recently, haven't I have, you? Like, uh, it's, it is, Nicolas Cage? Yeah, no, but they literally... And I know this has obviously got probably... I mean, to be fair, I've got Path of Exile written in here. <laughs> it is just a game at the end of the day. Yeah. But they release literally every three months. Okay. On the dot, three, six, nine, twelve, right. four content pieces every year. Um, it's not always scaled the same. So for those unaware of Dead by Daylight, usually you get a map, a killer, and a survivor. Sometimes it might just be a killer. Sometimes it might just be a survivor. But it is all scheduled out. They've got their roadmap. When did that game come out? It would have been 2016. I think that's when this whole model really took off. Yeah. And, and, and Siege, I think, I think Siege spearheaded that. I just can't think of another example that yeah. did it from the start. Um, and, and I don't see any talks there of De uh, Dead by Daylight 2. They've obviously upgraded no. the visuals and things as it's gone on. So when I think of 2, I think of an absolutely massive fucking change. Massive. Right. Dota, the original Dota, even when I was in almost bloody diapers, you certainly were in diapers, um, compared to Dota 2, I feel is a massive fucking change. Right. I think that's a, a substantial, it's on a whole new system for when it got brought over to Valve. Well, and Source. Uh, and new, Source engine, engine and all of that. Whatever, massive yeah. change. Um, Overwatch 2 misses the mark. Big time. Completely misses the mark. Yep. It, a total fuck up. Complete fuck up. And I'm going to be controversial here. I don't think Counter-Strike 2 is all that warranted of the number two. I kind Ooh. of get why they did it. That one's going to do well on TikTok. Whole, that, that, that one will do well on TikTok, by the way. Good there's one. the whole 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, the original patches of the original Counter-Strike. And then now it's like, okay, well, we're going to continue that. Here's Counter-Strike 2, moving away from Global Offensive. I get it, but... You know, you're thinking of this era, there's Path of Exile 2, there's Dota 2, Overwatch 2, Counter-Strike 2. Uh, is, should it, I actually, when they started to, you know, tease that they were doing the rebranding, I thought it should have just been called Counter-Strike. I mean... In this modern day and age, that's probably what they should have gone with. They went with the two, they right. made it try and seem like an overall rehaul. Uh, and it's obviously not. It, it's, you know, nicer to look at. They've fixed some code, they've added some cute little things, but it's not really like a new game. It's Go, but... Look shinier. But I mean, maybe we're getting 
caught up a little bit too much in the name of the game, right? If we took the Counter-Strike 2 model, mm -hmm. if we went through and completely reworked the visuals of Siege, updated it with, you know, all the modern bits and bobs and made the water look cool and whatever, um, put a fresh, I guess, coat of paint on every system in the game without, you know, destroying the core, which Counter-Strike 2 has not, has not done. Yep. Um, the biggest gameplay change is probably like, you know, smokes or whatever, right? If we did that to Siege, would that work? Would it generate the same hype you know that we're seeing in it? CS2? I'd, I'd call it health point, uh, health update 2.0. Because and of, the reason that, why, of that scale, just I, as like a seasonal I, update, or I what? Think, well, the the health update in Siege has a, a very good historical backing in terms of favoritism by the the, the fan, okay. fans and players uh, of alike. When they think of the health update, they think of saving Siege. Realistically, I think that's probably one of the first thing that springs to mind. So you think if you label it as okay, we're doing another health update. This might take us two cycles. Right. So you're not going to get anything. No, no new no new operators for a little bit, but we're going to revamp the code we're going to redo the lighting we're going to you know maybe the textures whatever we're going to make it like, like, like renovate update. the game we're going to renovate the game we're going to go under the hood fix <laughs> things up <laughs> but it's not say. siege 2 we'll just label this as health you know health update 2.0 i what, what's wrong with that i mean how would you pitch that though to the CEO of Ubisoft, is, uh, as a theoretical example. <laughs> I don't know how you pitch that to him. <laughs> a company which, let's not skirt around the edges, financially as a whole, has struggled now for a while and has been lifted up by a siege. You take out two update cycles and you lose all the revenue of, you know, potential season passes or whatever, depending on how you want to frame it. If you're going to have an absolute void of content and have no MTX, well, you're fucked for two cycles. And you have to then justify that and being able to bounce back and make arguably, you know, double the following financial year off what renovating the game i mean can Valve, Valve can get away with that they're not a public company they can do whatever the fuck they yeah, want I mean, and they, they have make forever so from, they literally make so much from steam I, that it's siege irrelevant just, siege just can't do that no. and it goes back to the point of does it need to do that are we at a point now uh, is the player base demanding it is the player count that low that we actually need it? yeah i mean look honestly you bring up very valid points i'm not necessarily disagreeing with you which trust oh, me good. you know you know i do like to disagree <laughs> with you so it's not like it's uh you be, the... you've been pretty tame on the show so far yeah no I, I mean to be fair i think we're hitting a lot of the key points and uh, maybe as time goes on i'm sure especially probably once we get back into esports things that's when we'll start to get a, a hell of a lot more but um I, yeah look <laughs> siege 2 is something you can probably market a lot more as well i mean we're pr kind of probably just going over pros and cons at this point really but uh, when you think about the marketability of a Siege 2. It's, it's kind of like Counter-Strike 2 in the way they're marketing. It's this, you know, new change, new era and, and, and all of that. So clearly that's something that goes into it. And therefore you market it, game count goes up. I mean, there's the evidence there when we think about the way that the CS Counter-Strike global and even, numbers and have even gone Overwatch, up right? ba based off just those numbers and Overwatch 2. Even I bloody went back to, to try it out. Obviously it turned out to be dog shit, but <laughs> um, no, I'm not holding back on that. But, Siege 2, I think, could have something like that. I, I could see a world in which they announce Siege 2, it gets all of the hype, it gets people playing again, and, and it does all of that. More than probably what a health update 2.0 would do. And, and it also means they can work on it in the background. And because it's in the background, there is no necessarily public time frame. They might have an internal one. Yeah. Uh, and it means that, that it could come out next year or the year after or whenever. So, uh, Or it could just be kind of like a you know, in the back pocket is for a rainy day when things look, are looking crap. Here you go, Siege 2. So you, you just never know. So would it work though? Would it actually save it? Would it just be really just a moment in time where it's like, okay, numbers go up and then stabilize? Yeah, I mean, I think before we talk about what we would want added, if this were to come into fruition, it's probably important to sort of talk about the state of the game because I think a lot of people... Um, frankly don't understand it on a, on a couple of different metrics um i'm a numbers man um i love looking at you know the finance reports and all that shit. did you just say that everyone watching does not understand no, the state that's, of the game? that's not what i said you're an asshole <laughs> shut up but again siege continues to outperform the own like the benchmarks that are being set by ubisoft so the numbers money wise are great the steam charts which which everyone loves to shit on when the game's you know having a decline one to be completely transparent, those numbers are fucking bullshit and I would not be using them as any evidence whatsoever because in, other, in, numbers, in right. other numbers that I have seen 
um, are far more accurate and far, 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 far higher yeah. than people would probably ever imagine. I mean, it's it's obviously not exactly hidden knowledge that Steam doesn't include console, firstly, upright. Yes. Like, you just don't get console from it at all. Uh, and, and you don't get you play. Yeah, and I'm under the impression from what I've heard from you know, reliable sources that the Steam chart numbers are also kind of dodgy, uh, just overall oh, in, so in general. Oh, so you mean anyway. for other titles? Oh, poten- non oh potential. Titles, I, I, I don't know to the extent of that. Yeah. I just know for Siege exclusively. Okay, cool. Um, so play numbers. I who your source play numbers. <laughs> play numbers are doing okay. <laughs> and they've actually seen a rise recently, um, year on year. Uh, obviously, we went through a pretty, pretty yeah. rough phase a while back. Um, but The last I checked, which was not too long ago, the numbers as of right now are the highest since 2021. Yeah. So that means that, yeah, okay, there might have been a little bit of a dip for the last two years. Post-COVID. It's, it's, it's obviously starting to, to stabilize and growth. And COVID, obviously, I think for a lot of games, kind of pushed numbers up a little oh, bit. Inflated them ridiculously. Inflated it. And then there's that down drop. And then it's kind of going back to, to probably where it should be. Um, so, look, uh, do we need a Siege 2? Not right now. Definitely not right now. Is it something that the groundwork could be going into potentially happening in the well, next five years. It would take a maybe uh, it would take a lot of effort, a lot of time. So a I would of, say a lot of if, planning. if at any point that Ubisoft wants it, I would hope they've already started on it. Yeah. What it, what however long it may take them from here. Do I think there might be a need for a siege two in two, three years time? Potentially. Within five years time? Maybe. Yes. So, but not right now. Certainly not right now. Um, and obviously, uh, that's kind of going back to to player numbers, the state of the game, um, the way the game plays and runs, and, and all of that. I, I just don't know if you really need to go that deep into it. Um, I, I, I guess they're moving forward from, I guess, Siege Two and that topical conversation. Um, what would you want to see in future updates? Then I know we've got it written here. What would we want to see in Siege Two or future updates? I think we've gone down the future and updates all. path. Yeah. Uh, more than what we'd want to see in Siege 2 because I think that whatever you would necessarily put in Siege 2 you could put in Siege 1 like it's not like you need Siege 2 to come out to actually add too much new innovation unless it's like something that hu- requires like huge back-end upgrades or whatever and I mean last time the devs came out about that publicly they said they're not currently restricted by the engine so take from that what you will um i mean the first point i've got listed here is they're probably gonna have to say that <laughs> <laughs> what, what what could we potentially learn um from r6 mobile which i'm sure is probably going to be a discussion point throughout this show as it goes on and the success of that especially in you know local markets like ours where mobile games actually i love mobile games insanely huge oh so do i and mobile esports yeah. too i'm happy to cast it um i'm not so not so much looking at this as uh, you know, R6 Mobile is going to innovate the game and it's going to change PC. I'm more so wanting to taper and set expectations within the community because I've seen it in other, you know, cross-platform games, Apex Legends as, an, as a, you know, broad example. Maybe not the best example because I think, you know, that mobile game kind of went to shit. But what we often see in these games, like at R6 Mobile, for instance, is going to be uh, different variants of maps, different looks on operators, different gadgets even you know different game design intentions which are specifically designed for the mobile platform and the mobile market so i'm just hoping we don't get to a point where we start seeing all these posts on reddit and, and people are like i think mobile got this really cool skin we must add this to pc immediately it's like bro that's not how that shit works and it's probably designed for mobile gamers not for pc gamers yeah no i agree i agree with you wholeheartedly um uh, yeah, and obviously mobile games are very difficult to emulate the main game. I think in pretty mean, pretty much almost almost every game title that I've seen that has kind of started as like you know PC or console or whatever, and then it takes its own direction over time. Yeah, and and so and, and a lot of them actually end up you know with completely different names. And you know what is League of Legends, Wild Rift or whatever that they've got. Called, yeah, yeah, something like that. So um, you know, I I I'm hoping that R6 Mobile will be successful. Yeah. To be completely honest, when I first thought, heard of it, I was just like, "There's, I don't know how the fuck you're gonna make that work." Like, <laughs> like it's, I mean, it's fucking rainbow but like, to be, on, on mobile. But. To be fair, and I'm not, sh- you know, this is not a, the podcast to be shilling Ubisoft or whatever. But the the mobile gameplay that I have seen recently actually looks pretty freaking good. Like, I think it looks good. There's there's variations in the way the operators look. Even the maps fundamentally have changes as well. So the game is not a direct clone. I think it's going to be great in its own right. It can perform well. Again, just yeah. bouncing back to the point, I just don't necessarily think it needs to be influenced or influence the okay. main game. 
I think the other part of it as well, and probably more so my my older brain, uh, is that mobiles have obviously come in leaps and bounds, um, as they usually do every single yep. bloody year. Uh, I still remember mobile games back in 2010 that were... <laughs> <laughs> Minesweeper. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 not not good. Doodle Jump. Do you remember Doodle Jump? <laughs> that that was the games that we had back then. So um, obviously, it's it's a completely different story these days. Uh, obviously, observer slots, uh, camera party. Back to the main game pre-camp. now. Yeah, back to the main game. Mobile, I'm sure, will have its own discussional points one day when it really actually comes out. Uh, Counter-Strike-like presentation. And I think what you're kind of getting at here uh, in the notes for this is how the, the cleanliness is of it, but also the ability for third-party tournaments to actually change and shape the UI to how they see fit. I mean, this goes, I guess, two ways. Um, for the casual fans this discuss, of, of the, our show, it's probably more so... Do we, do we have fans? Oh, I, I hope so. I love you all. <laughs> um, well, hopefully, uh, hopefully we do. Um, this discussion will lend itself probably more into the esports side, naturally. Um, obviously, presentation comes, like I said, in, in two ways. One, what's presented to the player, but also, and probably my primary focus, what is presented to the audience, someone watching the game, watching a tournament. Because Rainbow Six, yes, strides are slowly being made with things like free cam, but overall, you can if you compare side-by-side, side, CSGO, Siege, it is light and day which one is more friendly to the viewer, more inviting, more engaging, more interesting. More it, open. Siege is just stuck in the past. A long, long way, 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 way in the past. And I don't know, we don't necessarily need Siege 2 again for that to happen, but there needs to be big strides made in the development of this game from a UI perspective, from hopefully allowing more third-party integration and let people go ham on this shit. Let them create custom pathing like we see um, from old mate MC in, in CSGO. Do yeah. some really, really creative stuff. Yeah, and um, obviously the observer slots is a no-brainer in, in what that can obviously do. We've still got improve. one slot online. Not acceptable. Yeah, what that can do to improve the look of any broadcast related to R6 esports uh, in general. And, um, you know, free cam. Yes, we know that that's obviously coming in towards replays. Eventually, we, we want that for the, the live show as well. But yeah, going back to the, to the CS like presentation and, and i know in some ways that's got less to do with the game itself that's not like a siege 2 thing or siege in general no. it's it's a bit more on the esports but it adds so much value it, it just makes it look a bit more professional uh, a lot more clean uh, and hopefully a lot more adjustable if we do end up you know blast come in blast maybe want to actually use a lot more of their branding and look and the way that they actually say differentiate between uh, blast and esl for counter-strike you actually notice it when you watch the straight game. Straight away. Straight away. The way the HUD is, the way everything looks, there is a noticeable difference. The font, everything. So the colors, and that's something I would want for Siege. Uh, you know, if we have a third-party tournament where, uh, you know, obviously Blast have got the rights and, and all of that, but maybe there's a third-party tournament that gets accepted by an ESL, just using them as an example. It's very unlikely that would probably <laughs> happen. Um, but they would be able to obviously chop and change the UI to how they to their how they benefit away from what blasts do. Um, now you've got here as well like the smoke um, and and the way that that works, um, right. potentially water effects and, and stuff. Again, you don't need to necessarily have siege to to get those kind of changes to get those overhauls. I will add, you probably have to go deep in the old spaghetti code. Well, yeah, I mean that's. That's a common phrase that's thrown around. Um, I mean, we talked briefly about League before. Uh, every update, I see people whinging about spaghetti code on that. Siege is pretty much the same. Every live service game, it just turns into this uh, public discussion about spaghetti code. I have no technical knowledge or behind the scenes look at whether or not that is the case and whether there are things that are preventing the game from moving forward because yeah. of previous systems, coding, workflows, it's, whatever, technical debt. Uh, a bit of a cop out because it basically means that you've done a really shit job in upkeeping as you go along. That's the idea but, of spaghetti. I mean, code. my point is, is it even a thing? We like, don't, yeah, that, should, that is true. Like, we don't know. It's not like a publisher or yeah. developers come out and um, said, we have spaghetti code. It, we it can't may not even it. be spaghetti code. It may actually mean, yeah, they might need to do a graphical overhaul and the way that the, the systems are, they might need to change certain things to get like the, the volumetric smoke. How can they utilize, you know, like in, in video ray traced shadows and things like that. And the way that the water and all of that has changed. 
uh, yeah, we have absolutely no idea. We're just kind of spitballing. I mean, do we even them. want that in the game, right? Um, do we want to see, you know, Counter-Strike see... style smokes? Do we want to see yeah. more realistic shadows? Is that going to add to the game play? Is that going to detract from the game mm. play? I think a game like Siege could really benefit from, you know, visuals and, and sound improvements that actually lend itself into allowing for more engaging and tactical gameplay potentially but it needs to be purposeful you can't just be throwing in shit because oh it looks nice in the cinematics it, it needs to be playable yeah. and it needs to be the kind of shit that you know obviously looks cool it's immersive and it's not stuff that you know you can just go into the graphics things and just turn off and <laughs> bop right well i think that what you just mentioned there is actually quite big you you would need to turn these things on and off because obviously you want to be able to keep siege as a rather easily playable game that's obviously something that counter-strike have, have looked into with making cs2 to make sure that it can quite literally run on probably your phone at this this day and literally age. yeah um and so that's something to keep in mind if you do something like this in terms of an overhaul you also need to then strip it back and make sure you've got that very low setting as well as you've got that very high setting something to keep in mind um inspecting actually is one that you've got written here and i love it i don't know why that's not in the game it's such a common age thing really in any kind of shooter or, you know, the way games are in terms of first person these days, you've got charms, you've got good skins. It should be an absolute no brainer. I know that then goes back to once again, the spaghetti code, is it doable? How easy would that be? Is that something people would want? I mean, I, when I look at things like this, especially inspecting, where what are the downsides realistically? If it's a key bind that's being used up, you don't have to use it. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And if you really want it, you can put it on your, your bloody W key at that point as your, your W forward. You can inspect the whole way through. So, I mean... It's I, just, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's nice just addi it's additional addition. work for animators, right? Because you've got to animate it for every single gun or item. And then if there's a new gun, you've got to redo that process again. But at the end of the day, one of the easiest and most effective things I would imagine, again, haven't seen the numbers, would be guns eye and or charms in the game because it's the only thing you see visible yeah skins are nice but you see it like for five seconds at the end of the game and you might get your mvp animation once in a blue moon like it's not yeah. that scene and probably not as incentivized for people to buy so being able to inspect shit i mean it sounds maybe a little bit cringe to some siege players but just don't fucking turn it on you don't have to there's a reason why <laughs> if you look at fortnite which i know is not a game that's probably as much in the the minds of the, the mind, average Siege mind, player. <laughs> probably not. It's probably not in the minds of many gamers at the moment. I feel like it's kind of just moved away from the very front of the spotlight. But you think about the fact it's third party. Uh, third person, sorry. So it's a third person game. Therefore, skins are seen 24-7. You'll always see the skin that you have. All of the different things that they have as you, you, know, you drop down and whatnot. You get your different little gliders and, and all of that. These are things that you can visibly see. And if you actually go and look at like their gun skins, a lot of them are just pretty crap. Like they're just average because the guns don't really matter. You're not really seeing it as much. So you can see where they put the value. Yeah. And that's exactly where for Siege, like, yeah, you can go and get your Rick and Morty bundle. You ain't going to see it very often, are you? <laughs> no. Like it's it's not something you see in, in good old, you know, low budget Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just comes out of the grave. I mean, it's, the skins are really nice. Like I I think we should be super clear. Like the, the, I think the, the artist in Siege, Siege are, are really incredibly good. talented whether it be the gun skins or the models or whatever, but you just don't really get to engage with them as much as you possibly could. And that's why, yeah. great example, CS2. Why the fuck are they adding those intro screens and the MVP screens and stuff? It's so they can sell yep. more yep. skins. Second point you to can that- very, the bomb now as well. Yeah, I mean, and second point very, very quickly to that is, can we please, please, for the love of God, add a shuffle option in Rainbow Six, so I can select multiple skins that randomly shuffle. I have a bazillion skins now on every gun. I've been playing the game for eight years. I don't want to have to, on a whim, manually be like, oh, today I'm feeling like I want to play this skin or that skin. I've got like three share skins for every gun. Please just let me shuffle them. And on top of that, let me search charms. Thank you. I will end my point there. That's no. that's the guzz range of the episode, by the way. Yeah, there's always one, isn't there? Yeah. I love it. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think there's a, a, a very common features in a lot of other games. Um, being able to shuffle your skins uh, is something that I think shouldn't be surely all that difficult, if, especially since it's widespread within uh, many if other games. If you can games. change your skin on the fly while selecting your operator, there's no reason why there can't be a fucking shuffle option. Uh, marketplace, does that fit into Siege? Is there a world in which it becomes a factor? or is Like it CS? um yeah it could be like see i guess it probably has to be 
like CS to a degree. I don't really think of many other systems that use a, a marketplace that... I guess Dota, maybe. Yeah. But, yeah. The the issue I see with it for Siege is how do you, when and where do you start it? Do you start it fresh, slate, everything before the marketplace is untradeable? Or do you go back and allow other things to be tradable? Is that even fair? Then certainly becomes how does the price system work? How is it regulated? Well, how do you do it? And the other thing is how do you actually create rarity because in counter-strike it's true items are rare because you have to unbox them and those numbers are packs are incredibly low but yeah is that something that ubisoft are going to be comfortable with given other stances on gambling like for instance no gambling sponsors in esports would they feel comfortable having packs now for money i know there was a lot of fear in the community when alpha packs were announced ages ago that oh ubisoft is going to try and monetize these and yada 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 and they have somewhat for you know the special event skins and stuff but in general they've just been renowned which you can earn you cannot buy at all so yeah if there is ever a world in which siege does have a marketplace could it work maybe but that's going to be tough and that's a lot of work as well like i assume the technical work and upkeep behind things like the steam marketplace with yeah especially its volume I'm would gonna, be freaking crazy i'm gonna be honest i don't know if there's a world in which you can implement it and go back and add previous skins to the system i think you would have to do it yeah, as you a gotta you gotta pick it you gotta pick a date and i think you would also it. still have a lot of your skins say like the universal weapon skins the seasonal ones i think a lot of those would still be untradeable i don't think you'd be trading those kind of skins right um and obviously i think it would have to probably come from from alpha packs which means that the beauty of it is you just basically say marketplace has started here's the new set of alpha packs from here on out from alpha packs you get these skins and these skins are tradable i don't think that's too difficult to implement though then becomes the ramification i mean do you think the community would like it though sometimes and this might be a little controversial the community doesn't know what it wants oh well, they think they I do agree. what they know what they want. Yeah. Yeah. You think you do. But you don't. But you don't. Sometimes you do know when you are right, but yeah. often you're not. What I will say, though, is if the if the outcry and the sentiment is all universal one way or another, I think there's typically some some sentiment there. Like if, if 95% of people are like, no, this sucks, there's probably something to it, right? Where like, okay, a lot of But people... you don't want to spend all that time and money developing it just yeah. for people to hate it and then you yeah. never release I'd, it. I'd, I'd be keen to put out like a survey. Well, not us, but... <laughs> Ubisoft put out a survey. SurveyMonkey.com yeah. slash. Um, and a good opportunity for, I guess, for those watching, you know, is that something that you find interest in to see? Do you want the dragon lore on well, Carly? Exactly. That's the thing. Those, those. You or can... stickers. Siege stickers. What about knives? Appliable stickers. No, I mean, knives. I mean, maybe. You can't equip it currently, but if you could, that'd be that's interesting. That's insane. Like, do you just add it in? I think there stickers. Bring us stickers. Stickers. Esports share. I mean, boom. How easy would that be? It can be as simple as a logo. Could you do that without a marketplace? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you just, can do our six share now without a marketplace. You just put it in the esports shop and say... They don't even need to be like consumables. They can just be like, you can take them on so and put them on. So you buy like the Team Liquid twenty. They're like the reusable sticker. stickers. You can use them like a thousand times. You just can... add it to the um to the, the current bundle and then maybe up yeah. the price a tiny little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's Apply them on whatever guns you want. Like I, I, so cool. I guess marketplace itself, you don't have to necessarily have the marketplace. You can take elements of it without fully ripping it off yep um again though very keen to hear what people think about it I, I i don't know if there's been a massive amount of discussion regarding potential marketplace oh there will be now there's gonna be millions of people on the street i won't be able to walk <laughs> out of this place without someone asking me about it um anti-cheat i mean this is just no it's just brainer. an ongoing battle ongoing battle for every single game there's no game yep. that ever is going to have a, a perfect way around it i think you just kind of got to let the developers the especially the security ones just keep that doing actually know thing. what they're doing yeah not I, your fucking average story yeah, redditor i'm not i'm not even really going to get into it in um, fact it, i think actually just very quickly ubisoft actually probably deserve a little bit of credit for things like mousetrap they are literally innovating the space in trying to prevent mouse and keyboard on console which is obviously going to have taken a lot of r d and would have yep. been costly so i mean good on them for that it's not perfect but it's an improvement and anti-cheat is an ongoing battle hopefully one day uh ai can actually be useful in uh taking down people with uh anti-cheat ai one day who knows uh and obviously one of the last ones here again in terms of the future update models or potentially through siege 2 yeah a little bit more focus maybe potentially on pve or campaigns is that something that people would want essentially development time spent into that's the way you got to look at it you can't necessarily it, it, have these things and, and have your chocolate too i mean it'd be almost like developing a whole nother game really at that point and we saw that with r6 extraction 
I don't think that was probably the best model to have made it. Um, obviously, they saw success in Outbreak, which was the update back in Chimera, I think it was, like 2018, ages ago. Very successful. Game was very popular back then. I actually played that. Yeah, yeah. and it was, yeah. it was pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Um, have a couple of memories of that. It, something like that again, maybe something more fully fledged, maybe you know mm. something that harps back to old Rainbow Six games where it's um, you know four player PVE or five player PVE on like maps with maybe a bit of a story or something. Like, I don't know. Is that something people want i know personally i would probably not care i really don't care that much about it i would probably like play it once and whatever but i could see a, a large portion of the community you know that especially the casuals and those that are like super keen into military games looking for that um we've seen success from games like um ready or not or you know whatever it's called like those like and, and swat and those kind of tax shooters so yeah i think there's a market for it maybe if you look at overwatch 2 and the outcry that's how you don't do it. Based, no, well, more so based on the fact that people are upset that there are no hmm. of those PVE updates regarding you know what they promised. It probably does say that there, there could be an audience there for it. And maybe Siege could be the one that comes in and says, actually, well, <laughs> if you're not going to do it, we might do it to some degree yeah. and, and look to potentially still an audience there. So in terms of how far you go with that, do you go a full-fledged PVE update with RPG elements? Do you... You Another know, separate game attempt another, uh, after the last one what didn't yeah, really work. I don't know. I don't know if you do extraction again. I, I it, it did okay. Like I'm not saying that yeah. it did awful. From what I saw of it, it did okay, but probably not enough to warrant its own separate game. Yeah, it was a game up again. <laughs> um, uh, we're probably at the the point of this episode now where we're we're winding things down. We've touched on quite a lot regarding potential Siege Two. What would that look like? Comparison to obviously other games. Um, obviously the updates and, and the future of it. Uh, I think a lot of probably what comes out of this episode is, is probably more so what what do the viewers actually see? What does the community want to see? Yeah, are we out of touch with the common man or common Siege player? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I maybe, mean, maybe, maybe Siege 2 is desperately needed tomorrow and the game is in a shit state and none of those things that we want added are necessary. I, I don't know. Maybe Everyone's we didn't different. make the best comparison points to other titles that have two in it. Maybe we missed a couple here or there. I'm sure we did. <laughs> maybe we missed a couple of, again, other good examples of why you don't need to go down the two model. Um, you know, this very much comes down to, I think, the community. A lot of the talking points here need to be community driven. I, I think we're pretty big advocates for that, not just through our own um, potential community, but also really just the wider R6 community in yeah. general. Um, whether that's Reddit, Twitter, any kind of, you know, in-game itself. Um, you know, what do these viewers want to see? What do the, the play, sorry, what do these players want to see? What do our viewers want to see? Um, it becomes hard to know. And, and obviously this is where in future for, for our podcast more than anything, we'd love to probably discuss actual comments um, from people who, you know, are actually watching uh, and hopefully in future we can and have some of those and then that can probably add to a little bit of our own debate on the podcast. I agree. Um, I don't know what, what really more to add about that. I think, yeah, getting the community engaged, getting their sentiment, arguing a bit, having some banter, it's always good. Yeah, and it's difficult as well for us to probably say what people actually want to see, right? Like, it's, it's really difficult. We have a skewed sit- perspective. Well, yeah, and, and that, but it's also what we see isn't necessarily what the average player sees or what the average player wants, especially when we start to talk about things like campaign it's probably a little bit hypocritical for us to sit back and be like, oh, this is what everyone wants. But it's like, do they? Do they actually want that? And it's like, are these questions being asked enough? I know, obviously, if you go on R6 Pro League or you go on the R6 Reddit, I'm sure there's probably some level of discussion surrounding Siege 2. What would it look like? What would people want? But uh, evidently, I'd love to probably discuss it more with others. Um, you know, obviously, for us, we've got our, our patron that does allow a bit more of a direct conversation. Um, which would most certainly get you probably on the podcast. We can ask the questions um, directly and to ourselves from you and then discuss it on the podcast as well as... Uh, you can you can pay us <laughs> to steal you for content. There's also... Um, and and despite that, we would also still take some comments from the YouTube sections, of course, of course as well. Yes, and, yes. And, and to those um, that support us by watching, which is obviously just as important. So um, something that obviously for us, uh, we'd love to do more of. So uh, it would be great if you guys obviously could help us with that. What do you want to see from Siege? What do you want to see from us in general? Um, and maybe what did you just have for breakfast? Well, it could be dinner time. It could be dinner time. When, or 2 a.m. when they're watching. In Australia. Yeah. Uh, we'll close it off there though. I think for this particular episode. Yep. 
I'm going to close it on this. Siege 2, yes or no? Mm, no. <laughs> no. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> See you later. Marjorie. <laughs>